Let's do some camera testing. Well, when the three jobs living out of the car, Mama never told me life would get this hard. Running around the world playing my guitar. Baby, you can love me, you can leave me, I'm a honky tonk star. <clears throat> Since I became uh, interested in photography and video, uh, ever since that time, I've been looking for the perfect size travel camera, just like everybody else probably. I want a perfect size camera that can do everything and a perfect size lens that can do everything that when you take on your travels can fit easily into your backpack and you can pull it out and it's not too cumbersome to carry around. And I've been on a search for that camera for quite a while now. And I'm going on vacation here in a couple of months and I wanted to do just some quick comparisons between three different cameras that I currently own to see which one I think would be best to take with me on vacation this particular time. And I started this video a couple of days ago, then when I started editing, I realized it was gonna be a super long video. So I wanna kind of break it up into a series of different videos. And the cameras we're gonna be comparing are the uh, Sony a6400, the Panasonic G9, and the Fuji XX10, which is the newest camera of the bunch and the one that I just recently got, so I'll have to be doing a lot of testing with that one as we go along. Next camera we'll be talking about is the a6400, which I have here. And I really know what to expect of this camera. I've had it for a long time and I have enjoyed it. And the one thing about this camera is just the autofocus is just unbelievable. I mean, <laughs> the autofocus on the Sony cameras is just unbelievable. Uh, as soon as I came around here, it picked up my face and I can see that it's straight up on the eye detection. So I know that the Sony uh, autofocus is gonna pick up whatever I have to uh, need to do while I'm out on vacation. It's no problem at all. It also has a tracking feature which works really well. All you have to do is touch whatever you want to track on the screen. The main issues I've had with this camera is the uh, in-body image stabilization. It's just terrible. And uh, we'll do a little bit of a vlogging test here in a minute, but the, I mean, it is so shaky um, that it's basically unusable. While I don't intend to do just a whole lot of vlogging, that's just not my, my deal, what I'm comfortable with doing. You can tell a lot by how the camera is gonna react uh, if you're just holding it out and the stabilization of it because at some point you'll be trying to just to take a shot of something or follow something or do a, a pan of something or just video something in general, all handheld. And you can tell how shaky your vi video is gonna be uh, when, you, when you hold it out to the side, walk around a little bit, you can kind of get a good idea of how it's going to react when you're just doing everyday shooting. And uh, the A6400 uh, is just pretty, pretty terrible when it comes to uh, stable. I mean, it has no stabilization. You get a lens like this 16 to 35 that has a, a stabilization built into it, and it's still just not very good. But I wanted to give this one a shot. I know, I know the. Uh, I know the, the videos will be, will be good, and I know that the uh, photos that I'll take will be really good as well, because I have uh, several prime lenses for this one. But also another downside of this one is the battery life, which is just absolutely terrible. Every time I go to fire this camera up, I have to worry about if the, the battery is gonna wear out or not wear out during shooting. They seem to go down really, really fast. The battery life is just not very good and it's a little bit frustrating. Also with the APS-C line of cameras from Sony, there's just a very few uh, lens options. You have the three primes from Sigma, which is are really great and now I have all of them. And they're really great to have. And if you're just gonna go out and do some photography, uh, they're the lenses to have. But since I'm gonna be going on vacation, I really don't wanna travel with, you know, three, um, three separate prime lenses. I've tried that before and it just didn't go very well. It's just, you're all the time switching lenses and, and trying to figure out which lens you need to be using at what particular time. So when I go on vacation, I like to have just a general zoom lens on my camera 
And the, the choices are fairly narrow with the uh, A6400 or the APS-C from Sony. Uh, I know they have the 16 to 55 from Sony uh, that, that has just come out. And it's a, it's a really, really nice lens from what I've seen online, but it's super expensive. And to invest that much money in an APS-C lens doesn't seem um, like a smart thing to do. Now I know that the Tamron has come out with a 17 to 70 uh, lens just recently. Uh, it's actually not for sale quite yet for this uh, system, the APS-C Sony system. And I've looked at that lens uh, long and hard. And again, it's just kind of hard to invest in any more glass into the APS-C system because you really don't know uh, what Sony's going to do with it. It just seems to be uh, they forget about it for a while and they come out with another camera and then uh, they don't come out with any lenses in forever. Uh, it's just kind of a forgotten, I think, a forgotten system, a uh, forgotten system as far as Sony goes. And it's really just kind of hard to invest, you know, eight, nine, twelve hundred dollars into a lens when you don't use a camera just a whole lot uh, because you're going to be, uh, when you get back home and you're doing videos like this, you'll be using other cameras. So it's hard to invest that much into a lens especially when you don't know how good the stabilization is going to be. So that's just a brief look at the Sony system, the A6400 and what I think about it as far as a travel camera goes. Uh, I want to try to do some video videos on all three of these cameras and I want to try to shoot with all three in each of the videos and right now we're shooting with the Lumix G9 and um, while some of them I had uh, automatic settings on or some portions of the videos I've always left the automatic auto autofocus on to see how it uh, reacts in certain situations. So that is a look at the A6400. What all what all I think about the system and how I think it'll do as a travel camera. It's a great little camera. It's served me well over the years, but I'm not quite sure if it's something I want to continue to invest in. So anyway, the next camera we're going to be looking at is the Lumix G9, which we're shooting on right now. Had it for a year or so, been on vacation with it. Have a quite a bit of uh, familiarity with the systems and how it does in different situations. Right now, I'm sure that the autofocus is going crazy with this light over here. <laughs> if you watch that light right there, it's probably coming in and out and uh, pulsing forward and back if I was the guest. But I don't know, we'll have to get it on the computer and look at it. But uh, the next video we're going to do is we're going to get on the, we're going to talk about the G9 and what I think about it as a travel camera. Thanks for watching and be sure to check out the next video.